Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at the SV555 telescope from SV Bonnie, which you can see right here. It is fully rigged up, however the telescope part is of course just this part right here. And at the beginning let me just say that this telescope has been sent to me from SV Bonnie directly for the purposes of this review. However, no money has been exchanged and this is a completely independent review. So uh, let's actually take a look at this rig very quickly to see what do we have here. So starting from the back, here we have my good old trusty uh, ASI 294mm Pro mono camera. Then we have an electronic filter wheel. Then we have a rotator from Pegasus Astro, which is hooked up to the telescope itself. The telescope, like I mentioned, is of course this black tube on the bottom right here. Here up top we have a guide camera and a guide scope, also from ZenWO. And down below we have a ZWO EAF automatic electronic focuser that is hooked up by this awesome belt to the helical focuser of the telescope itself. As you can see, the telescope has also an aperture ring. You can close down the aperture from the maximum 4.5 down for some reason. I don't know really why would you want to do that for astrophotography, but if you want to use it to, for like terrestrial stuff, that might come in handy. And the focuser here is hooked up via this belt. This entire kit to uh, the handle, the dovetail, and all of these uh, red stuff comes out of the box with the telescope, including the belt and all the stuff, this entire kit, in order to be able to connect the electronic focuser, which is great. It works well with ZW EAF. However, maybe other focusers would be able to work with this one as well. But the EAF is tested and proven to be working just fine. So the telescope itself is a five element Petzval design, which means there is no need for any kind of a field flattener out the back, which is pretty awesome. It has a large image circle that supports full frame cameras. The 294mm Pro is a Micro Four Thirds camera that I have right here, but I might be uh, receiving some full frame cameras from TubeTech shortly, and maybe I will be able to still test it with this scope, which would be uh, very, very exciting. So just bear in mind that you can hook up a full frame camera to the scope, no problem. Uh, also inside the scope, inside the flange right here, you can actually take off some screws and put a two inch threaded filter. There are some YouTube videos and other reviews where you can see how exactly is that done. I'm not gonna show the same stuff all over again, but it is possible if you have a one shot color camera, it might be handy to not have to use an external filter drawer, but with a mono camera, you still probably need a filter wheel. So that is less useful for uh, shooting mono. Uh, like I said, out of the box, it supports electronic focusers, especially the ZW EAF. I am not sure about any others, but this one for sure works. Uh, it has a variable aperture, like I've already mentioned. It comes with a Vixen style uh, dovetail. So if your mount supports this type of uh, dovetail, which it should, uh, then you are just fine. You don't need another dovetail. Uh, and the focal length of this telescope natively is 243 millimeters, which gives a nice and wide field of view for very impressive shots, uh, uh, deep sky uh, shots of the night sky, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. I have three very impressive images that I have recently captured. I uh, had a very good week when it comes to the weather. So I was shooting like four or five nights nonstop, collecting a lot of data. Uh, but one other thing about the physical build is that this telescope also uh, includes a lockable rotator. So you can actually unlock it here and rotate your field of view. If you don't have a rotator, this is super useful. But even if you do, it allows you to kind of orient uh, where the rotator is actually uh, kind of aligned to distribute the weight properly and to not bump into like if you have a larger guide scope or anything like this. So that is also pretty, pretty handy. And uh, overall, I very much love how the telescope looks. Uh, I think it pairs very well with equipment from ZWO with their red uh, colors. Uh, so everything looks really, really pretty to the eye. Uh, and the belt for focusers uh, is really something that I enjoy a lot. I like uh, I liked mechanics in college. I was when I was a kid. I was used to play with Legos, which had a lot of these belts and cogs and different kind of stuff. So it really reminds me uh, this kind of um, period of my life when I was playing with with this stuff. Uh, so I really really enjoy seeing these kind of mechanical work. Uh, uh, in this uh, in this build right here. But of course, how it looks 
doesn't really matter if it doesn't perform well so let's like actually take a look at some images and we are going to dive straight into PixInsight where uh, I have uh, some of the images here as you can see I have three stacks of hydrogen alpha so we can take a look at the raw stacks uh, actually not necessarily raw they are stretched but still you can see the stacks and here you can see the final images so let's take a look at the HA stack I think the field of view with the MFT uh, sensor looks very very impressive for this target this is of course the North American Nebula and if we zoom in we can see that the stars look very nice in the corners i don't see any visible uh, kind of aberrations maybe a tiny bit of coma uh, but honestly in this corner it looks pretty much perfect and this is not sharpened or anything this is uh, just stretched and corrected for uh, background uh, gradients so it looks really really nice and the final image i was able to produce uh, with the hydrogen and oxygen filter so this is a bicolor kind of rendition looks like this which uh, i think is very very impressive uh, i love the field of view and i love the level of details here in the cygnus wall looks an absolute banger so let's take a look at another image this one is the um seagull nebula uh, this is kind of tricky to shoot from my latitude 50 degrees north of the equator because it's pretty low in the sky even uh, in um, even in winter uh, but this is how it looks and again with this larger field of view i was able to uh, capture some of the nebulosity here uh, beside the actual seagull so it looks pretty good there's some nebulosity over here in the corner and i think uh, the overall image quality is uh, really really impressive uh, and of course in the uh, in the actual corner of the sorry in the actual center of the image it also looks very very good and from this data paired up with oxygen 3 i was able to produce this image which uh, again i like a lot um, yeah i mean just just a very impressive image uh, in my opinion uh, I will be posting them on Instagram soon, so you can uh, check them out. Uh, links to my uh, socials and everything is, of course, in the description. And this one is the area of Flaming Star Nebula. And again, with this nice field of view, I was able to capture way more than I would usually go for with a tighter scope, which would be somewhere around here or maybe the tadpoles. Uh, but here you can see some nebulosity also in this area and again i think the quality of the stars uh, in this uh, particular scope holds up very 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 well you can see some nebulosity in the corner i love the image quality on this one um, and the image that i was able to produce from this data looks like this and again i very much uh, like what i'm seeing here i i when i started doing deep sky i wanted to be the tighter the better i wanted to zoom in into all of these little details but now i begin to appreciate that a larger field of view can actually produce uh, a lot of the fainter details that usually you don't see in images because people don't usually pay attention to these but with a larger field of view you can see that around those popular objects there's actually some other kind of smaller and fainter nebulosity going on so i would really really recommend this scope to play around with a larger field of view it is small it is compact you can easily travel with it if you pair it up with like a zw am3 harmonic drive mount you can totally put it in a suitcase even fly with it to the canaries or or whatnot and the small size and compactness is yeah, makes it easier to manage you don't need to have um, such perfect guiding as with longer scopes so i would say for beginners this is a perfect choice i would highly recommend this and also for seasoned astrophotographers that want to actually explore uh, larger fields of view this is something i would definitely uh, also recommend and again i'm gonna try this out i hope so uh, soon with a full frame camera so this field of view will be even larger and even more impressive so uh yeah stay tuned for my channel to see uh, a video like this uh, in the future and honestly you know there's nothing more to say about the scope it's it's really it's really nice it's really well made looks awesome produces fantastic images so highly recommended there will be some links down below to sv boney where you can purchase this scope and yeah thanks for tuning in and see you next time bye bye